Um, hi, everyone. My name is Joey Katz. I'm the program associate with Boston Jewish Film. We're thrilled for uh, today's um, uh, uh, event today. Uh, we have Alex Salzberg, who is an animator, a local animator and uh, professor. I will read your bio shortly. Um, who is going to do uh, a really fun, really easy, but also really informative um, animation demonstration workshop. Hope you all have your materials ready. Um, if not, you know, very a very easy list of materials so you can grab them um, and get right back to it. Um, so first of all, Alex, thank you so much for joining us. I'm really excited for this. Yeah, no, um, I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. So a little bit about Alex uh, here. Alex is a Boston-based independent animator, filmmaker, and teacher. In addition to developing independent shorts, Alex has also created animation for Nickelodeon, WGBH, and MTV, and has also directed music videos uh, for uh, musicians like Billy Ray Cyrus. Um, uh, Alex is an adjunct animation professor at Lesley University Oops. and oh, offers um, animation. Sorry to interrupt. We're seeing a few things in the chat saying there's no sound. Oh. But I hear you. Um, sorry to interrupt the, <laughs> my no, bio. It's okay. Um, just make sure, everyone, that you're not uh, muted. Um, yeah. And Robert just said, click join audio in the lower left. Um, that helps, too. You're all pros, you know this. All right, great. Um, so yeah, just a little bit more about Alex. He's an adjunct animation professor at Leslie University and offers animation workshops to kids of all ages as a uh, founder of the Animation Lab. Uh, Alex is also co-founder and director of Animatic Boston, an organization that supports and educates New England animation artists. And we also have a link that we'll post in the chat so you can see more of his work. So yeah. Again, Alex, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. And uh, I think I'm gonna just turn it over to you. <laughs> cool, no problem. Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. Um, so uh, yeah, the reason I was invited here is uh, partially because uh, Boston Jewish Film Festival has a great film um, called uh, Bukra de Mishmish, which I think, or Bukra Field de Mishmish. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm butchering that, but uh, it's a documentary about um, some Jewish animators in uh, Egypt in the 1930s who were creating animation back then. Um, so we thought it would be fun to learn a little bit about animation together. And those of you who want to and who brought some supplies can, um, can join along with us. Um, and I think uh, they're posting the supplies in the chat if you want to take a few minutes to gather them while I intro this. Um, but yeah, so I am a 2D animator, which means that um, I animate uh, drawings. So the work I do is a little more like The Simpsons or, you know, um, uh, things like that. And a little less like Pixar, which I also love. I have some friends who work over there. Um, but I do, I animate cartoon drawings, uh, which is actually not that different than what the uh, Frankel brothers did in that film in the 1930s. Um, but I have it a lot easier because I get to draw into the computer. So I have like a drawing tablet, um, kind of like an iPad that I draw into and animate. But just like uh, the Frankel brothers and other animators at that time, like Disney, the animators at Warner Brothers, the Fleischer brothers, I have to kind of make a video one drawing at a time. Um, so I'm really happy to not have to deal with all those projectors and equipment and everything. Um, but uh, what's fun is today we can learn a little bit how uh, we create that magic. Um, so something that I always sort of like to uh, start with uh, is just talking about how animation um, really just works because we're tricking the eye. So animation is just a series of drawings. They're all still drawings. Um, and your eye and your brain kind of does the work to make it look like it's moving. So it's actually kind of being animated in your head, if that makes sense. Um, so something I like to do to show off how animation can trick the eye um, is a device called a thaumatrope, which we're gonna build together. Um, so the supplies you're gonna need for the thaumatrope are um, an index card. And if you don't have an index card, you can 
take a piece of paper and fold it into roughly that size. Uh, you're gonna want something to draw with. I'm gonna use a Sharpie uh, just so you can see it on here, but at home you can do a pencil or anything else. And then you're gonna need um, a pencil. And that's actually not just to draw with, but uh, this will be to spin the thaumatrope. And then you're gonna need some way to fasten it. And that could be either a stapler or tape. So I'll give everyone a moment to gather those things. Um, and by the way, if at any point you have a question and the question can be about animation, it can be about my work, it can be um, unrelated, but I may not answer it. Uh, you can feel free to put it in the chat or in the Q&A panel, um, if you can find that on the bottom and I'll answer them throughout. There may be some time while we're all working on our things. And then also those of you who make um, these two animation devices that we're gonna make today, um, we wanna see pictures and videos of them on social media. So when you do that, you can tag me and tag Boston Jewish Film Festival and also um, feel free to email those to Boston Jewish Film Festival as well. Um, so once you have your index card, uh, the first thing we're gonna do, and you, you'll have time to do this. You can feel free to just watch first if you want, but the first step is to just sort of fold it in half like a book or a card. So you're gonna wanna have it folded in half like this. And this is called a thaumatrope and it's a small device. It's kind of like a little animation toy that we're gonna make. And um, it's a, a good example of how we can trick our eyes into combining images. So then once you have this, you're gonna draw two different pictures, one on each side. Now you don't have to choose the same pictures that I'm drawing, but you wanna draw two pictures that go together. So for me, I'm gonna go for a really simple example of this. On one side, I'm gonna draw a fish and in honor of um, the Frankel brothers, I'm gonna kind of try to draw things in sort of a 1930s animation style. So they always have the big eyes, usually like a big smile. So here we've got a little 1930s fish. I'll even add some bubbles. And I'm gonna add a little bit of color. You don't have to, you could even just do these in pencil, but I wanna give it that nice black and white animation look, just like in the movie. And I'll even add some color to the eyes. So there, we've got a fish on one side. And now on the other side, I am going to draw, you may have guessed this, whoops, sorry for shaking the camera. I'm gonna draw a fish bowl. So now we've got two sides to this thing. We've got a fish on one side and a fish bowl on the other. So now the rest is actually pretty simple. And though I'm gonna demo this again when I show another example. So uh, don't worry if you missed it the first time, but with either your tape or your stapler, you're gonna add, if it's a stapler, four staples. You're gonna add one staple on the top. So right there, you're gonna add one staple on the open side where it sort of folds. And you're gonna add two staples, one on each side of the bottom. And I'll show you why we did that. We did that so that we can kind of open this up and using the point of the pencil, stick it in. And now I'm gonna hold this up near my face. So we're gonna wanna look at that window. And we have kind of this lollipop on a pencil. Now, we'll see how well the Zoom cameras pick this up, but I hope you try are trying this for yourself at home. If you put it between your hands and kind of rub your hands together like you're warming up, as you can see, when you spin it fast, it looks like the fish is in the bowl. And so 
that is an, exactly how film works in the sense that your eye is seeing things move fast and it's combining them into one image. So in this case, it's combining them into one image, but in a few minutes, we're gonna also learn how it, we can create the illusion of movement. And this is called a thaumatrope. It's that simple. And what's fun is you can kind of change them up. So if you only have one pencil, you can do more. So I'm gonna demonstrate again and also show you kind of a tip uh, of what to avoid. So I'm gonna make another. So as a reminder, we are going to fold it in half. And so for this one, I'm gonna draw an ice cream cone and I'm gonna draw see an ice cream scoop and because we're going for that 1930s animation style we'll give it some eyes and maybe i'll color in the cone if i can find my marker So now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll do it with tape this time. For those of you who are using tape, I'm going to tape the top, just like that. I'm going to tape the open side, like that. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna put tape on the left and right leaving up space in the middle to put in the pencil. So I'll take the same pencil as before, and I'm gonna demonstrate what I did wrong on this. So if you look up here near my face, so you got the ice cream on one side, the cone on the other. I don't know if anyone has guessed what's wrong, but because I put them on opposite sides, the ice cream is not on the cone. So that's my first tip is try and choose two images that can, can line up in the middle. It works really well if it's an image and something else, but I like these happy mistakes because now I can just adjust it so that the ice cream is flying off the cone with these motion lines. And now, now it works. It looks very calm about it. And then the last thing I would advise not doing is I would not recommend coloring in any big area that would block something else. So it might be tempting to color in this water on my fishbowl, right? But if we put the pencil in, Now it's a little bit harder to see the fish. It's a little bit muddy, not too bad. So those are my thaumatrope tips. Um, does anyone have any questions on uh, building these thaumatropes? Is anyone running into any trouble? And remember, if you wanna show off what you built, you can um, tag us and uh, email me or Boston Jewish Film Festival. The uh, emails for those are in the chat. Um, so I want to give everyone maybe like five minutes to finish up their own thaumatropes, um, but it would be a good time uh, if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat uh, or the Q&A and I can answer them, whether it's questions about animation or thaumatropes. I, I'm going to pop in here because I actually yeah. have a question. Um, <laughs> So I'm wondering, do you know what like the origins of the word thaumatrope mean? Like, <laughs> um, I don't entirely. That's a great question. That's something now I wish I know. I know that there's a lot of old film and animation devices that have the word trope in them. So I think it's mm. the, so there's some, for instance, something called um, a zoetrope, which is like a spinning one. And um, there's a, I'm going to, 
butcher this, but it's like Praxis something scope. Um, yeah, that and, sounds that sounds right. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and there's like, I think also like a kinetoscope. So I think the or scope and trope are like have something to do with old um, like pre-camera film devices. Um, okay, but then I'm not sure what the thumb means. It might have to do with the spinning, but I'm not sure. Uh, so that is a great, a great question that I'm sorry I don't know the answer to. No, it's all good. Um, um, I, I also, I mean, if people do have questions, um, you can put them in the Q and A section at the bottom middle of the screen. Um, but I do have another question. Yeah, I'm just wondering, because um, like the the 1930s style of animation is so you know it's so iconic and it's very of that time so yeah. i was wondering if you if you wanted to put your historian hat on if you could <laughs> um just talk a little bit about why that was the style then and who were the major influences around that time yeah so from what i know and my historian hat is much smaller than a real historian's hat um but from uh my study of it so initially a lot of the first animation was being done um kind of to animate comic strips um so um you know they would take um comic strips from the newspaper and try to make them move and then as they did that for more and more years and they started developing sort of the actual like craft of animation itself so just like any art form there's all these rules now rules are made to be broken but there's all the you know just as like when you're painting you learn about uh or drawing you learn about perspective and tone and all those things layout um composition animation also has these principles we call them um things like um you know overshoot and settle meaning like if a character like is punching another character the hand's going to go forward and then back a little bit mm -hmm. and you see as these things start to develop um animation starts to look smoother and that's where you get like all the really nice looking stuff that we remember like um, bugs bunny mickey mouse all that stuff that's when it started to get a lot smoother. And you can see in the um, Frankel Brothers films as well, in the documentary, their earlier films look a little bit more rough and then um, they sort of get um, more you know, smooth and that has to do with those principles. Um, but yeah, the big studios doing this kind of animation, there are lots of you know, people and there are people in other countries as well, including Egypt um, doing this, but the bigger, the studios with doing a lot of the cartoon style stuff were like Disney, Warner Brothers, and then um, the Fleischer Brothers who were doing like Popeye and Betty Boop. And um, a lot of it was just people experimenting. I imagine it was a pretty exciting time to be an animator because um, it was a pretty new, it's a relatively new art form um, sort of developed just like film. Obviously it, you know, relies on pretty modern technology. So it's, you know, the first animation or the first animated films are only about as old as the first films. Yeah. Cool. Um, but it's funny in, in animation history, like we talk a lot about attempts to make things animate before, you know, film existed. And there, there are cave paintings where, um, you know, thousands of years ago where they painted an animal with like, you know, 12 legs. And the idea was that it looked like it's running. So, which is, I, truly, if I was to animate someone running really fast, I would draw more than two legs for some of the drawings to make it mm. look that way. It's very cool. Very cool. Um, I, I just learned that actually recently that they would use, not that this is a, 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 a cave art seminar, but I, <laughs> it is I just find that fascinating <laughs> that, you know, you know, movies and animation have predated movies as we know it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's fascinating. And, you know, people are always making innovations um despite the the techno technological limitations right of um but yeah yeah i feel that i mean i even think back to like when i was a kid and i imagine many people when they were kids did creative things that they didn't necessarily know how to do they just you know wanted to figure out the best way to do it with what they had so you know um i teach a lot of young kids through animation lab classes and they're so lucky because I bring in iPhones with animation apps on them and they can just make animation and then email it to their parents right away or whatever. Um, but when I was a kid, you know, I had to just, I had a 
cheap camcorder and just had to click start, stop, start, stop, start, yeah, stop yeah, to yeah. animate. Um, and someone, you know, who grew up before my time would have, you know, had to do it on film if at all. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think um, hopefully everyone's uh, at least gotten to do one thaumatrope and I'm excited to see some of them. Uh, but I'm going to move on to our second one, which the thaumatrope uh, is sort of a, our preview of animation. I wouldn't even necessarily call it animation because it's not moving, but it's a good example of, you know, bringing something to life by tricking the eye. But now we are going to make an animation right here and we're, it's going to be only two pictures, but I promise you it is going to look really cool. So uh, this one involves a lot of folding. So stay with me and I'll try to do it slowly and I'll do it more than once. Um, the folding is not what makes the animation cool. It's just how we get like the right size of paper. Um, so to do this, I'm gonna take a piece of paper um, and I'm holding it this way. I'm gonna fold it in half. So not like a birthday card, but the long way. So you have this longer piece of paper. And then I'm gonna fold it in half again. So now I've got, if you look at my head, this long sheet of paper, and then I'm gonna fold it in half one more time. So it's long and now I'm folding it so it's a little shorter. So it should be about the size of a bookmark. So let me just review that one more time. I'll just do it in front of my face. I folded it in half this way. So you have kind of this long rectangle in half again. So you have kind of a really long sheet and then in half one more time. So you have like a bookmark shape. And now um, with your scissors, these are definitely children's scissors. Um, you're gonna cut in half. Oh, here, I'll do it on the close up along this last fold that you did. So you have two bookmarks. And then um, on one of them, I'm going to unfold one of these tabs and I'm gonna cut it off. And so what we'll be left with is two sheets. You have this thicker one and this thinner one that's only one sheet. So it's pretty uh, much two things the same size. So just to review, you have, you'll have this thicker one and this thinner one. And again, I'll show you that again real quick, just so it's um, clear. So we've got our folded sheet of paper here, right? And I'm just gonna unfold the top layer and I'm going to just snip that off. And you'll see when we make this why it's important to have a thicker one and a thinner one. And I'll demo that, I can demo this one more time if anyone asks um, after I show you the animation. So now we're going, we've got our two sheets and we're going to create two pictures, but unlike our thaumatrope, which is two pictures of different things, we're gonna do two pictures of the same thing where one thing changes. So I'm gonna start and maybe I'll just do a face. Let's do sort of a weird character. I'm gonna make them kind of grumpy. So we got our grumpy face. So this is in animation, what we would call a frame. A frame, we call every drawing a frame. I, that's the same um, with film as well, has frames. And animation on film is 24 frames per second. Um, and actually a lot of animation is only 12 frames per second. And we show each drawing twice. And you don't need to know any of that for this activity. I just thought it might be interesting. So now I'm gonna do our second picture of this guy. 
where we change one thing. So the best way to do that is to put this line up this smaller piece of paper on top. And I don't know how well you can tell on the camera, but you can kind of see through. And this is how animators uh, work to make their characters consistent. They'll put a piece of paper over the previous piece of paper and draw. And digitally, it's the same thing. Um, we call it digitally, we call it onion skin because uh, you can see through it, but it's the same effect. So digital animation that I do is, has a lot in common with this. So I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna make him happy. And I think he has eyebrows and I'll add that shading on the side that I did before. Kind of looks like a pumpkin, okay. So now we just need to put this together so that we can animate it. So this is where we need a pencil again. You wanna take this top sheet and roll it. And I'm gonna do this again on the other one to show you, but you put the pencil on the end, sort of horizontally like that. And then as tightly as you can, roll it around the pencil and roll it down at least, whoops, at least past your drawing. And roll it nice and tight. So when you take the pencil out, you have this little rolled sheet. And then last but not least, we just need one staple or one piece of tape on the left side. So we'll put that here. So just to review, we rolled this top piece so that it's all the way over to the left. And if it's not far enough, you can roll it again more with the pencil. And then we stapled it on the left. And now if you put the pencil in here, whoops, and move it across, If you do it at just the right speed, it animates. And I'm gonna roll this tighter again so that it stays over to the left more. And I don't have a name for this thing. You could call it like a mini flip book or something. So now when you move the pencil back and forth, it gives the illusion really quickly that your character is moving. A little bit of a lag on Zoom. So I'm gonna show you some other ideas for what you can do with this effect. We've got our other two. One thing that animators do a lot is they make a character look like it's walking. So the way you would do that in two drawings is you do one pose where the legs are out. And then on the other one, you would do one pose where the legs are together and one of them is up. And the head would be a little bit higher. So this is called a walk cycle. And you'll see this in most animation. In an animated movie or film, this would be about eight frames long, but we're gonna do it with two frames. And then if you staple it, and actually I should have rolled it first, but you can do it in either order. We roll it up. And the pencil. Now, when we move it back and forth, it looks like he's walking. So that's our eye making us think it's movement when we're just blinking two things. And then another thing that um, animators do a lot of, I'm gonna do it on this same one, is we do, something called lip sync. So lip sync is when we have to match it up to audio. So 
That was really hard to do back in the day because you needed all kinds of devices. On a computer, it's nice and easy because we have like a nice sound wave that we can look at. But either way, you have to create mouth shapes. So um, I think, what should this character be saying? Maybe this character can say Boston. So um, we would do the ah for Boston. And this would be the mouth shape I'll draw for this. And then for the second mouth shape on the second frame, I'm gonna do the same face. And I'm gonna do the mm for in. And now, roll it up again. So we got Boston, 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 Boston. And so that's how we would do lip sync. And obviously there's a lot more shapes you would draw, but we have to, as animators, really listen to the sound and then think about what shape it would be. And there's so many different effects you could do with this. Um, another thing that often looks really good is something opening and closing. So one that I like to do is you can do like a little alligator. So I did a little alligator there. And then on this one, so you can do more than one on a sheet if you don't wanna make more things. I'm doing everything the same except the mouth is opening. So when we animate this, pencil blocks it a little bit, but the alligator's mouth opens and closes. You can do it faster to make it happen faster or slower you want it to happen slower. So does anyone have any questions on these or how to get these done? Maybe I'll demonstrate the fold one more time just so it's there. So I'll do that up here. We folded it the long way. And then the long way again. And then we folded it this way, up and down, to make it kind of a bookmark shape. We cut it in half along this fold. And then we take the top layer with the thinnest piece of paper and we cut that thin piece off. And then once we did our drawings, we would roll this part up around a pencil and we would put a staple or I'll do it this time with a piece of tape. We would put a piece of tape on the end so that we have our page. So uh, we have about 10 minutes left. Um, so if anyone, uh, has any questions. And I'm also happy if you have questions that the answer involves a drawing, I'm happy to draw something right here on camera. Um, and those questions can also be questions about these devices and how to, uh, how to, you know, get the most out of them. Something probably a lot of you have made in the past is a flip book which involves a similar thing of tracing. And it definitely involves drawing a lot more drawings. Um, a common question that I get that someone may be thinking of asking is what software I use to animate. Um, so I use something called Adobe Animate, uh, which um, is made by the same company that makes Photoshop and all those programs. So I animate in Adobe Animate and I um, 
usually edit in Adobe Premiere and I use, I use all Adobe stuff, Adobe Audition to do the sound and Adobe Photoshop usually to do the backgrounds. Often in animation, the backgrounds are a different style than the character drawings um, so that you can get the, uh, the character drawings to kind of stand out. So you may notice if you watch, especially like a Disney movie or an old um, cartoon that the, uh, the backgrounds are usually like um, acrylic or oil paintings in those. And then the, um, the characters are flat color with black outlines. And actually the way they did the flat color with black outlines back in the day. So I, again, I'm very lucky to be, <laughs> to be uh, an animator in 2021. I have all these tools right at home. I don't need um, any fancy cameras or anything. I animate just on a tablet. But uh, back in the day, they would draw the animation on paper first. So really thin paper like this. So it's actually even thinner animation paper. And then somebody would have to trace that with ink onto a plastic cell. Um, and then you uh, would have to um, turn that cell over and paint the character on the back and keep that paint color really consistent so it's flat. And the reason it has to be on a plastic cell is so that when you put it under a camera to put it on film, you can see behind the character onto the background. Um, so sometimes uh, there are people who collect those cells. So there's lots of them floating around. You can, um, you can sometimes find just like a single drawing of like Donald Duck or I'm sure there were cells um, of the uh, Mish Mish character in that uh, documentary as well, in addition to films. Um, so yes, that's, that's a common question I get. Um, I have a question. Sure. Um, <laughs> I know you just helped uh, one of our uh, uh, soon to be professional animators here today, uh, give them some help on spelling Thaumatrope, which I'm like, I'm glad you posted that again because I'm like I, I want to look up more Thaumatro. So yeah, um, it may it may actually be. I'm gonna post two options because it may actually be uh, with an O. I'm realizing. Uh, so one of those. <laughs> okay, I thought you. I thought the first one was right. It seemed. Yeah. Um, but I was wondering since um um so you've had experience as I said earlier um in working on music videos. Um, yeah. And one of the things that you see in the in Bukra Field Mishmish is are these musical animation short films um, that the Frankel brothers did. So I know you just showed kind of how you do lip syncing, but um, if you could like kind of speak to the challenges of doing lip syncing specifically for music. Yeah. Um, in some ways, it really depends on the music. So. Um, lip syncing seems scary and there are a lot of animators who don't like it. I am weird in the animation community in that I really love doing lip syncing. I find it kind of like, kind of zen. Um, and I also think lip syncing is more forgiving than you think. Um, because the instinct that animators have, right, is to draw like every letter. So if someone is saying like, um, Hello, uh, I'm Alex. The instinct would be that we have to draw the, the H sound and then the E sound and then the L sound and then the O sound and so on, right? Yeah. Um, but actually, kind of like we saw how these two frame animations like, you know, um, Boston or whatever, like you really just need to do the eh and the o, oh. And that's also true to how people talk. If I say hello, you're really only seeing two shapes that my mouth makes. Um, so actually when you're doing something like music, if someone is singing really slowly, that could be really difficult. So if you are, I've never done a music video for an opera song, but if you were animating to like an opera song or, or like a lounge singer or something, then you'd maybe have your work cut out for you because you really have to get it exact. Um, but uh, I've done, I, for instance, a couple of rap videos where the, um, the musician is singing and rapping really quickly. And that's very forgiving. If someone is talking really fast, as long as their mouth is kind of moving, 
it sort of um, it sort of works. Um, yeah, but one of my a trick of the eye, right? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and that's um, and one of my favorite things about music videos is that there's like a built-in timing already. That so a lot of the challenge of being an animator is planning the timing of when everything happens in a mm. film, especially if you're an independent animator like myself, where often I'm also doing or producing the soundtrack and the editing and all that. But a music video is essentially the timing is set before you start. Um, and there's a built in sort of rhythm and beat to animate too, which is cool. So that, I, that's something. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I love doing music videos. It's my favorite. Yeah. That's a thing that I've always been really interested in personally. Uh, I also, you know, well, there's a keyboard in the background, so I, I play music. But, um, but I've always been interested in how you are able to keep something on beat, but while while working frame by frame, like mm. how how those kind of how you get those to work in conjunction with each other because they're to they're they're the same kind of principle you know like yeah. frames are the same as beats but they don't always necessarily match up so like how do you go about doing that so something i've been doing uh more recently is relying on so i'm not a musician um i but my brother is a musician and a composer and an audio engineer so what I'll actually do is I'll send a song to him and have him tell me the number of, because on an audio editing program, you can also look at, or maybe a video editing premiere or edition, you can look at like how many frames, you can set the measurement to frames. And mm -hmm. the, um, so I'll actually have my brother tell me like, okay, this beat is like roughly every 11 frames. Um, okay. And then, I can make essentially like a visual, I, I hope this makes sense to people, but a visual metronome. So imagine if like I was singing, I won't, um, but if I was, and then there was like a dot in the corner that blinked every 11 frames. And so then I know as the animator um, that it doesn't have to, not everything has to happen on rhythm, but in a music video, you often want something happening on rhythm. So um, I just had actually a music video come out for, um, this came out two days ago, so I'm very excited about it uh, for Udkar Shambudkar. Um, yeah. And he's a, an actor and, and rapper. Um, he's on CBS Ghosts right now, I think is what you okay, might know. Okay, yeah, um, I thought the name sounded familiar, yeah. Yeah, and he's in um, Free Guy and uh, he was in the Mindy Project. I think he was, I think he was in Mulan as a character, actually, the live okay. action. Um, but anyway, that song had a lot of characters that like bounce up and down. So I really wanted... I really had to pay attention to the beat. So it felt like that, but also each of them would kind of bounce a little differently to the beat so that it felt different. But yeah, cool. that's kind of the approach. Um, fascinating. That's fascinating yeah. stuff. Um, so I think we're just about at our, our 45 minute, well, we're, yeah, even closer now, uh, at our 45 minute uh, cutoff, unfortunately. But um, Alex, this is fantastic. Um, I hope uh, you all have the opportunity to share your animation, um, maybe pursue a newfound hobby. <laughs> um, and yeah, let, let Alex know uh, what you, how your work turned out. Let us know at Boston Jewish Film how your work uh, turned out. And um, we actually just posted um, Alex's uh, website so you can check out his work there. Um, yeah, Alex, any any last things you want to say before uh, we head out for today just thank you so much uh, this was so fun as a boston jewish filmmaker <laughs> it was fun to be a part of this festival so i really appreciate it yeah we appreciate you for uh for making the time and teaching us some things today <laughs> no problem anytime all right take care alex and uh see you all um at our next event enjoy the festival